Another whistle stop tour. This is uh, some research that I'm uh, currently involved in, um, and uh, one of the uh, areas that I spend a lot of time working in is zoos. We've already had some great introductions this morning on some of the challenges um, of working with zoos around the world, so um, that set me up nicely for this uh, project. Um, so yeah, I'll just talk about it. Um, basically, this is part of a, a PhD research project that I'm doing, and what I'm looking at is what are the current uh, knowledge and attitudes towards animal behaviour and welfare in zoos across, the Euro across Europe and also in China? Um, and can we influence those attitudes and that knowledge um, through effective inter intervention, through effective education? And ideally, uh, as is the, the objective of most education, can we influence uh, behaviour change, influence how these animals are kept and how these animals are managed within zoos around the world? So we know that, um, we think that animal welfare education can be effective in improving attitudes towards animal welfare, um, but we also know from um, looking at zoo curricula around the world that animal welfare training does not usually form a part of the training of zookeepers. We also know that cultural and systemic influences can uh, provide barriers to effective uh, changes to improve animal welfare, so we need to account for those, particularly when working internationally. But um, there's been some nice work that's been done uh, looking particularly at the livestock industry where we have uh, an industry-specific culture and could we theorise that within the zoo community we also have that common zoo industry culture that may tra transcend some of those geographical um, cultural problems that, or barriers that we may face. So the approach of this project is um, an initial needs analysis followed by uh, analysing the data that we get um, from uh, qualitative interviews and also from um, quantitative and qualitative large-scale questionnaires, um, development of a curriculum and implementation of training, which would then be um, evaluated for success. And the anticipated outcome is an effective industry-specific international education in zoo animal behaviour and welfare, encouraging achievable behaviour change. So the target regions are China, because that's where I spend quite a lot of my time. I've lived there previously, and it's an area that I'm familiar with and have good connections with. And uh, Europe, for a similar reason. Also because they're quite diverse areas, or we perceive them to be quite diverse areas. And the population that we're sampling, as George said this morning, there are a whole variety and, and scale of different zoos around the world. For the purposes of this project, what we're focusing on are zoos that either fall under the membership of the Chinese Association of Zoo Gardens or the European Association of Zoos and Aquaria. And it's a participatory project. It's really important, I think, to work with um, industry and not just to criticise. The zoo community is quite a traditional one and it is very sensitive to criticism that has been levied against it um, over you know, previous years. And so I think it's really important to have the zoo community on board. And also that helps us as researchers to really understand and identify what the challenges are. So we've conducted semi-structured interviews with zoo staff across China and across Europe. Um, so these are uh, areas that we've, I've done interviews in China and across Europe. And gathered uh, opinions and information on a wide range of animal welfare, behaviour and conservation topics. Um, and it's been important to identify barriers. So uh, this is a, just a quote from a, a, a keeper in Northern Europe. Um, and there's, there is, as, as we have sort of anticipated, quite a high level of suspicion towards animal welfare within Europe um, or within zoos generally. And, and that was something that I was kind of expecting and, and wasn't very surprised to find. But then other sort of feedback that we got through um, these interviews I thought was, was actually really enlightening and, and, and really interesting to see because quite often when I'm working in China, um, when I come back to the UK, there's a lot of stereotyping or a lot of perceptions that people from within the UK have towards China and particularly towards how zoo animals are managed in China. And I think quotes like this are really important in remembering that zookeepers generally love their animals and it doesn't matter whether they're zookeepers in China, whether they're zookeepers in the UK. They're doing that job usually because they do have a level of empathy towards those animals and often they want to do better but don't have the tools or resources to do so. So um, following on from that, we developed a large scale survey which was disseminated with the support of the zoo communities in Europe and China. Got 334 uh, responses in uh, Europe, um, and that data is currently being analysed. 
Um, I'm going to skip through this because I've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, and um, within China, we did a direct data collection because uh, that was more effective than trying to do electronic surveys, uh, just again, being culturally um, more culturally acceptable. Preliminary results qualitatively, this is just a couple of wordles that show the types of words that came up through the interviews. And the types of words that came up were really very similar across both um, areas. We identified a huge need and desire for uh, further training in zoo animal behaviour and welfare across both communities. Both communities reported that there was currently very little training on those topics. Um, and we also looked at the types of delivery methods that uh, were wanted by both communities and also discussed some controversial issues. And we found that it's fine to talk about controversial issues within this target audience. It's just a, 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 a making sure that we do it sensitively and that it's from an educational point of view rather than from a critical point of view. But uh, with those caveats in place, it's, we can talk about animal performances, we can talk about breeding and culling, we can talk about euthanasia of charismatic animals. Um, so this is just a quick graph.